Welcome in, along with Mike Renner. I'm Steve Palazzolo, and this is your Hakeem Butler NFL Draft Profile, all powered by PFF Edge and Elite. Mike, we've got Butler here, who's number six on the PFF wide receiver rankings. A lot of people have him all over the place. We have him as a fringe first-round player and just an absolute monster at the catch point. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Is he's a monster at the catch point and a monster where you want to be a monster at the catch point, down the field. The most yeah. deep catches of any wide receiver in this draft class last season. He could absolutely moss smaller cornerbacks. And the 20-plus yard throws, the go balls, a lot of times is just the ball tracking ability to position himself and then come in with the football. It's something that we think is going to translate at the next level. That's what tantalizes you. That high level play, he has more of those than pretty much anyone in this class. Yeah, he kind of flashed a little bit in 2017, caught my eye with pretty good movement skills for a guy that's about 6'5", 230. And then the production last year, just fantastic. 3.28 yards per route. That was number seven in the draft class. You mentioned all of the deep receiving yards. Uh, 721 you know, led the entire draft class. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the question marks, though, just the natural shiftiness in and out of breaks. In today's NFL, where separation truly is king, you know, is he lacking in that area and too reliant on his ability to just win at the catch point? Yeah, that is the biggest question. Only 60 catches. You know, he was top 10 in terms of the draft class in terms of total yardage, but it all came on 60 catches because his route tree, basically where he won, was just down the field. The intermediate range, he struggled to consistently separate. I worry about the way he uses it. So he uses that big physicality at the catch point, but did not use it in his routes. When a smaller receiver got, or small, smaller cornerback, excuse me, got his hands on him, Hakeem Bullard struggled to get him off of him and then create that separation necessary to complete, you know, passes in the intermediate range to be a possession type of receiver, which his body type suggests. So that's the biggest concern for me. Still raw, though, I feel like as a prospect at this point, but you love the high end plays. That's why we still have him pretty high. Yeah, and if you compare him to a guy like DK Metcalf, who has that similar just monster size, we've seen DK just destroy people in press. Guys, mm -hmm. even at Alabama and doing it in the SEC, he's a guy where you say, hey, don't really want to press him because if I whiff, if I miss, he's, he's gone. gone because of the speed. Whereas Butler, your corners did have that success, as you said. Um, so I think that's kind of what separates them. Not a massive separation between those two guys on our draft board, but enough that we have Metcalf higher. Yeah, I think you've just seen it already with Metcalf, with Butler. I'm not saying he can't do it. You just need to see it. You need to see him develop that skill in terms of physicality, being able to create that separation at the line of scrimmage with his body. He's never going to do it athletically. It's just that that size is going to be difficult for him to do it just purely off of speed quickness. But with that size, use it better on his full route tree. Then we'll see a more complete receiver. And then the drops, you got to bring him up. 12 drops last season. A lot of them concentration, though. I still like the way he tracks the ball down the field. Yes, yeah, 17 drops if you go back two seasons on mm -hmm. only 100 with, with 101 catches. So um, something he needs to clean up. So there are things to clean up in Hakeem Baller's game. Again, we have him as an early second-round player if he ends up in the first round. Perfectly fine with it because of his big size. It's your Hakeem Butler NFL Draft Profile, all powered by PFF Edge and Elite.